Ooh. Man. Yo, this this uh, article really got me kind of emotional. And uh, I got to share it with you, family. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house. I really want to know what y'all think about this uh, because it is really a... Uh, it's really something. And um, because I just experienced so much death, I guess in the last six, eight months, it has really, um, it has really pierced my, my soul. And I, I want to know what y'all think about this. Okay. You think it's, ooh, cause I don't, I don't really don't have an opinion. It's just, you know, I don't hardly read anything that leaves me or see anything that leaves me at a loss for words. This has left me um, at a profound loss of words. And and so I, I have to share it with you now. So uh, let me get myself together. Oh. Let me get myself together. Okay, a dead woman talks to mourners at her own funeral. And so there's a new all-powered holographic video experience allows grieving loved ones to engage in a two-way conversation with the deceased. Oh, my goodness. The, oh, God. Technology available in the UK from this week was created by her son, Dr. Stephen Smith, a co-founder and CEO of Los Angeles-based AI company, StoryFile. Dr. Smith said the hologram shocked mourners and answered questions with new detail and honesty. Oh, wow. Ooh. Oh my goodness. So the woman, Marina Smith, who's his nun, uh speaks with her family member in a heartfelt video about her life. And I don't know if this is gone too far or just too, too, too much. But it's very piercing. And um, I got this story. It's it's in the Daily Mail, actually. And I want to know what y'all think. If y'all could have a chance to, at the funeral, in a holographic form, talk to your loved one and have them have a conversation with you. How open are you to that? Here she talks about how she didn't, uh, the grandmother, the mother, his mom, how she didn't do everything right. She shocked, of course, uh, the, the, the mourners. Oh, God. Ah. Uh, and, you know, family members, because they had no idea what this would look like. And um, she said her time here is done. And uh, she's done all she could do here. I mean, it is, to, it is one of the most profound pieces I've ever seen. I don't think I'm ready for something like this in my own personal life. I, I don't know if I can handle something like this right now. Uh, but it has got to be the most moving and touching thing that you could ever experience. What y'all think about that? Y'all think that's too creepy? How would you deal with that experience 
of uh, talking to your loved one via hologram at their funeral um, and allow them to explain to you um, how they feel with the transition, what their expectations of you are, what their life was down, you know, just all those tangible things. Oh, I wish I could um, play a little of this for you, um, but I don't want to get into no copyright problem. So if you want to see the article, go over to Daily Mail and um, you can actually see the woman speaking to her family members. Uh, wow. By, she, this is all done through a via, in, via artificial intelligence. Um, in, in the telegraph, anyway, he says, the doctor says, mom answered a few questions from grieving relatives after they watched her cremation. The extraordinary thing was that she answered their questions with new details and honesty. People feel emboldened when recording their data. Mourners might get a freer, truer version of their lost one. Story file creates a digital clone of the subject by using 20 synchronized cameras to record them answering a series of questions. Experts then process the footage, tagging clips and using it to train an AI um, that can provide responses to these questions in a natural language. The finished product is then loaded up to the story file platform, which can be interacted with after the individual has passed away. Those who attend their funeral are then able to speak with their loved one as the technology creates the illusion of a real-time conversation. Mrs. Smith lived a life of philanthropy, helping people in need, underdeveloped areas in the UK and world throughout volunteering and setting up a nonprofit. She purchased a derelict farm in Nottinghamshire in 1978, which she and her husband initially turned into a Christian conference and retreat center. However, in 1995, they converted it into a National Holocaust Center, and it remains the only museum in the UK dedicated to Holocaust education. Oh. Mrs. Smith was recognized on the Queen's 205. Uh, 2005 New Year's Honors list with an MBE for services to the Holocaust Remembrance Education Fund. In January, she spent several hours over a two-day period recording her answers to her story file questions using a webcam and her computer. Dr. Smith said his mother answered questions about her early childhood And it was overwhelming. I, I just don't know. I, I want to hear from y'all. Are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready for it? Let me know in the comments below. Whew. And if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe and share the channel. And I, I'll see you in the next video.